Okay, I'm going to do a couple of uh, homework problems related to uh, section 25.4 and 25.5 energy stored in the capacitor and capacitors with dielectric. So let's share the uh, iPad. And this is a fairly lengthy um, problem. Uh, let's see if there's any. Uh, uh, well, we'll just go with it here. Uh, two capacitors, C1 equal 18 microfarads and C2 equal 36 microfarads are connected in series with a 12 volt battery uh, and a 12 volt battery is connected across the two capacitors. Find A, the equivalent capacitance, uh, B, the energy stored in this equivalent capacitance. Also find the energy stored in each individual capacitor show that the sum of these two energies is the same as the energy found in part B. Will this equality always be true or does it depend on the number of capacitors and their capacitances? Uh, F, if the same capacitors were connected in parallel, what potential difference would be required across them so that the combination stores the same energy as in part A? And lastly, which capacitor stores more energy in this situation? C1 or C2. So let's get started. You can see this, uh, uh, equa this equation 2513. That's the one I referred to in the lecture notes in the, the PowerPoint as being very important. Um, the uh, uh, energy, electric energy uh, potential uh, is, uh, it can be the Q squared over 2C, uh, the charge over twice the capacitance. It can be one half the charge times delta V, or it can be one half um, of the capacitance times the voltage squared. So let's uh, draw the circuit they have here. You have 12 volts, you, know, you have 18 microfarads, and you have uh, um, 36 microfarads, and I use my little shortcut of uh, C1 times C2 divided by their sum, C1 plus C2, and I get um, an equivalent capacitance of 12 microfarads. So 12 volts uh, uh, divided by, uh, I mean 12, 12 volts across a 12 microfarad capacitor, the energy stored is one half C delta V squared. So that's uh, one half times 12 microfarads times 12 volts squared. And you get 100, I'm sorry, 864 microjoules. Now let's look at the units. One farad is equal to one coulomb per volt, and one volt is equal to uh, one joule per coulomb. So if you have farad times voltage squared, that's uh, uh, C divided by a capacitor uh, uh, divided by uh, um, or coulombs divided by volts times V squared, you end up with coulombs per volt um, times coulombs times joules per coulomb, and you end up with joules. So that's how we ended up with, in this case, microjoules. Um, so, uh, so A was, the answer to A was 12 microfarads. The answer to B is 864 microjoules. So C sounds, uh, find the, C says find the energy stored in each individual capacitor. So we have the total charge Q uh, is equal to uh, C delta V, 12 microfarads times 12 volts, we end up with 144 microcoulombs. So um, I'm going to use mu sub, the, uh, the potential energy is equal to one half Q squared C. Um, so that's one half times 144 microcoulombs squared divided by 18 microfarads. And you end up with 576 microcoulombs. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, 576 microjoules. Um, and, uh, that's across the 18 microfarad capacitor. Across the 36 microfarad capacitor, we have one half times the total charge, 144 microcoulomb squared divided by 36 microfarads. And you end up with 288 microjoules. Um, now, let's add the, those, uh, two, let's add 576 and 288. Um, that's part D. Uh, part D says show that the sum of these two energies is the same as the energy found in part B. So if we add 576 and 288, indeed we get 564 
microjoules. Um, that's the same value as in part B. Um, so, and uh, let's see. E says, will this equality always be true or does it depend on the number of capacitors and their capacitances? The total energy of the equivalent capacitance will always equal the sum of the individual energies of each capacitor. Now, F says, let's put them in parallel and see what, uh, see what we have. Well, we have uh, um, uh, the, the question, uh, if the same capacitors were connected in par parallel, what potential difference would be required across them so that the combination stores the same energy as in part, um, as in part, uh, I, I lost my place. The so that the combination stores the same energy as in part A. Um, so if we, let's get the equivalent um, capacitance and if they're in parallel, you just add the capacitors, 18 microfarads and 36 microfarads. So that's equal to uh, 54 microfarads. So the, um, uh, potential energy is equal to one half CV squared, but we're now we're uh, solving for V using the same potential um, uh, potential energy. Uh, so it's V is equal to the square root. If we solve for V, V is equal to the square root of uh, two times the uh, potential energy divided by the capacitance. So V is equal to two times 864 microjoules. Uh, divided by 54 microcoulombs, and you end up with 566 volts. Now, for G, uh, which capacitor stores more energy in this situation, C1 or C2? Well, for G, we have that 560, 5.66 volts, and that's across both uh, the 18 microfarad and the 36 microfarad, since they're in parallel. So it's a simple matter of just uh, using the uh, one half C times V squared in each case. So the, for the 18 microfarad, it's one half 18 microfarad uh, times uh, 5.66 volts squared, you end up with two, 288 microjoules. And if you um, use the, um, the same formula for the 36 microfarad, one half, times 36 microfarads times 5.66 volts squared, you end up with 576 microjoules. So the 36 microfarad capacitor is holding the uh, uh, greater potential energy. I got a visitor here, go on. All right. Um, now, uh, we're gonna talk about dielectrics and that's uh, problem, 20, problem 26. And if you recall the slide, let's see if I can um uh let's stop share and then share the um let's go back uh, uh yeah i'm using this it, this very top um this very top uh, delta v equals delta v zero divided by kappa uh so let's go back to the um ipad and We'll see that delta, uh, uh, I guess let's read the problem statement. The voltage across an airfield parallel plate capacitor is measured to be 85 volts, shown in figure 25.26a. When a dielectric is inserted and completely fills the space between the plates as in figure 25.26b, the voltage drops to 25 volts. What is the dielectric constant of the inserted material? Um, so we just use the, the uh, the formula that we saw at the top of the slide, delta V equals uh, V zero divided by kappa, solve for kappa, and uh, kappa is equal to V zero divided by delta V, so that's 85 volts divided by 24, 25 volts, and you end up with 3.4. Uh, so the uh, dielectric constant is 3.4, um, that's the answer, 3.4 for A. Can you identify the dielectric? 
If so, what is it? What is it? Well, let's look. Let's look at the table. I don't have the same the whole table, but you can see uh, if you look at the whole table, the only one that uh, matches 3.4 is nylon. Um, so yes, we can identify it, and it it is nylon. Uh, if the dielectric does not completely fill the space between the plates, what could you conclude about the voltage between the plates? Well the voltage would be somewhere between 25 volts and 85 volts. In other words, part of it would be in air, part of it would have the dielectric, and so it would fall somewhere in between. Okay, and I think that's, uh, those are the only problems I've, uh, I've done. So uh, we'll stop the share and stop the video.